The evolution of the flats boat can trace its roots back to the days when the only access into the Florida Keys was by railroad. Skiffs were modified by anglers so they could stock tarpon, permit, and bonefish that inhabit these gin-clear shallow waters. Over the years, composite technology has given birth to an entire industry of lighter weight hulls, allowing anglers to pull further onto the flats than ever before. Today, on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, we're showcasing boats that can allow anglers to venture into skinny water. These are flats boats in the 16 to 22 foot range with shallow water agility to give you a stealthy approach. Some key features to look for in this class are a shallow draft so you can fish well onto the shallow flats without the hull hitting bottom. Flat decks give you the maximum amount of fishing room. An interior with an open cockpit gives two anglers plenty of space to move about and carry extra gear. If you're a fly fisherman, it's essential that your boat has a snag-free deck. Horizontal rod holders keep all of your rods out of the way but easily accessible. For long runs, a backrest at the helm will make your ride more comfortable. In a smaller flats boat, a center console with a front seat may be the best place for your angling buddy to ride. Wide gunnels allow an angler to move fore and aft while fighting a fish without having to step down into the cockpit. A polling platform is the most important feature on a flats boat so you can move silently through the water. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as we feature three flats boats that let an angler fish super shallow water. Skull Island 16, the Hughes Redfisher 18, and the Sterling 220 XS. They'll be conducting walkthroughs, test drives, and reviewing key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Welcome to this edition of Best Boat. I'm Dave East, boating editor of Florida Sports and Magazine. And I'm Captain Rick Riles, program director of Florida Sports and Radio Network. Today we're going to be looking at three flats boats. These boats were built for a specific reason, to get an angler in places where other boats just won't fit. You know, Dave, you're right. When we think about it, think about our dads. And you and I talk about fishing with our dads a lot. Our dads could drive up to a flat and wait 100 yards, okay, on a good day. For us, think about the acres, the miles of new area opened up by boats that could float in five to 10 inches of water. As advancements in technology and boat design started to really kick into the boating industry, we started to see some really nice boats. To today, you've got the technical polling skiffs, you've got infused hulls, you've got state-of-the-art technology combined with the old world fishery, and you've got some craft now that can do things that our grandfathers just couldn't do. We've gone from boats to boats that would float shallow, to micro skiffs now that'll essentially float on a wet sponge. Well, basically from Pensacola, all the way around the Horn, all the way back up to Jacksonville, there's applications for a flats boat where really that's the only boat that will get you access to these areas. It's a boat that I can take to the Keys and chase a bonefish. I can take it up to Jacksonville and get way back into those oyster flats for redfish, or I can go chase a largemouth in Lake Okeechobee. Which ones are we gonna look at today? Well, Rick, we're going to start off with looking at the Skull Island. It's a 16-foot technical polling skiff, state-of-the-art materials in the design of this boat to get really, really skinny. Then we've got the middle of the class, which is the Hughes Redfisher, the grandfather of the flats boats that are out there. She's 18 feet long, all business, serious flats fishing boat. Then if you really want to get a feature-packed boat, the largest boat that we brought is a Sterling 20, and it has got everything. Well, it does, Dave, and, and as you get smaller and you get more technical, you get more mission specific. As you get a little bigger, you get more applications built into it. So none of them are the best boat for everybody, but our job today is to find out which one might be the best skiff for you. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This segment is brought to you by Costa Del Mar. See what's out there. Florida Sportsman, the source for fishing in the outdoors since 1969. Florida's largest fishing and outdoors magazine. Year-round TV with real-time Florida Sportsman and Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Florida's number one online resource. Over 8 million page views a month. Live reports from the water every Saturday morning. Hands-on instruction, seminars and demonstrations. Books, charts and more. Become part of the Florida Sportsman community today. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This week, we'll be featuring 16 to 22 foot flats boats. 
Dave, we're starting out this morning on the Hughes Red Fisher 18. This boat started the fiberglass flats boat revolution. Absolutely. The Hughes, it's built by Maverick Pathfinder Boat Company out of Fort Pierce. And really that whole company, everything they do revolves around fishing. Well, it does. And it all started with the Hughes. There was a Hughes long before there was any of the others. And of course, it was a brainchild of Bob Hughes. There was a niche flats boat market in the Florida Keys. I still remember the first time I saw one come to Jacksonville. I thought the guy brought it there to store it. Well, I was the same way on Lake Okeechobee because I've seen these with trolling motors outfitted for guys that are fishing for bass. They are now probably the signature flats boat. If you talk to the general public and you ask them to name some flats boats manufacturers, one name is going to pop up first over every other. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? You can take one look at the boat and you know why. This boat is serious business. It's got everything you need. You've got storage. You've got rod holders, nice big wide gunnels, release wheel, live wheel, perfect size console. It's all about flats fishing. If you're going to decide on what the best boat for you is in the flats boat genre, you've really got to define the mission you want to do with your flats boat. Well, you're absolutely right. There again, this boat we brought today, it's in the middle of the class. We've got the Skull Island, which is smaller. We've got the Sterling, which is larger. So this is the middle sized boat, which will kind of let you do a little of both. You can still fish the flats. You can get into the bays. And if you've got to cross a long, let's say you're going to run from Isla Morada all the way to Shark River. This is a boat that'll do that. It is, Dave. And every boat, you, when you're deciding on what size boat, how much draft you want for your boat, what kind of power, it's all a compromise. You give up something to get something. This boat may well be the best boat for a person that's looking for a good flat boat. Well, when you brought up a good point when you said draft. Most flats boats have very little dead rise. Some are even just flat on the bottom. The trade-off there is they can get very, very shallow and they have very little draft. Basically what draft is, when your dead rise hits the bottom, that's your draft. That's your draft. <laughs> it's the distance from the water line to the bottom of the boat is how much she drafts. Rick, any boat to be defined as a flats boat has got to have a big bow casting platform and this Hughes absolutely has one. Another thing I like, they've decided to put their fuel tank forward under the casting platform. That's going to offset the weight of that big 150 in the back. It is. It's going to help your draft, Dave. But I got to tell you, any quality flats boat has to have a few things in common. First off, you notice the deck is flat. The cleats recess. A lot of guys fly fish from these boats. And you can't have your fly line snagging on something that's around your feet when you're on the deck. See these wide gunnels right here? I've got that big tarpon on. I can go flying right down this gunnel and, and without having to get down in the cockpit and get back up and stay out of the way of everybody else. There's a lot of things that make fishing from this boat easier and define the very genre of flats boat. When you look at the design of this console, it's very simple, but it's everything you need. Even down to the grab rails here and here, where if we're running in rough water, you can go I've got fast. a place to hang on to. Yep, you got a place to hang on to, Dave, and yet they even thought so far is to round off these edges, okay? If you're fighting a big tarpon and he's switching end to end, okay? He's on the bow and all of a sudden he charges down the stern. You got to be able to come down the gunnel and with nothing to snag your line on, whether it's a spinning rod or a fly rod. Just rounding off these edges means that there is nothing for your line to catch and break your fish off on. Well, another thing I got to tell you, I drove the boat for a while this morning, having this backrest here, all the difference in the world, especially if we're going to make a long run, this to me would be a necessity. But then the rear casting deck, you've got a center mounted live well, you've got a release well over here that could double as a second live well, and then plenty of storage on this side. Well, you do, Dave, and that takes us back to, you've got fish that you can weigh in a tournament that is a release tournament. Okay, while well, your fish let him go, and you keep your bait separate in a live well. But let's talk about the lunch table we've got back here. Right, well, no flats boat would be called a flats boat without a pulling platform. I would much rather fish from up here because I can see, just like you like the towers and your big sport fisherman, I like a pulling platform in my flats boat. Every time you raise a foot off of, the, off of the deck of your boat, regardless of the kind of boat it is, you greatly increase your visibility looking out. This boat isn't just designed to fish, it's designed to see fish and throw at a specific target. Well, and that's really what the flats boat is designed for. If you see a fish on the flats, you've got to be stealthy. You've got to sneak up on that fish because he's wary. He's aware of everything in his environment, boat presence, birds, everything. You've got to be up here, no motors, slowly push that boat up onto the flats and make that cast. 
The Hughes 18 Redfisher may be the middle of the class that we brought today, with one being smaller and one being larger than this, but this is one boat that really is versatile. It can do it all. Flats fish, bay fish, even go out and hit that inlet. Well, it can, Dave. You can cross a broader expanse of water in this than you can some of the smaller technical skiffs that we'll be looking at a little later on. And you know, flats boats have come a long way since Bob Hughes got this thing started, but I think he'd still be proud today of what his company's putting out. This thing has stayed ahead of the evolutionary curve when it comes to building great flats boats. Stay tuned for this week's Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar. This segment is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel-efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all-new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. Welcome back. Here's Dave and Rick with this week's Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar. Dave, welcome to my world. I'd rather be on the bridge of a sport fishing boat than any place else on the planet. But let me tell you something, this is all about being able to spot fish. It's not different than you being on your polling platform on your flats boat. Well, having a good quality pair of sunglasses, we can't emphasize enough. When I'm on a polling platform and I'm in the Keys or in the Everglades, you can see down in the water so much better. Not only can I see the fish, but it keeps me out of danger because I can also see the channel and I'm not going to run aground. Dave, people don't understand, there's no secret weapons, okay? There's no great secret weapon that makes a sport fishing boat crew or the captain better than another. It's a thousand little things. For example, if somebody starts up this ladder to help me spot fish for the day, they've got great intentions. I can take one look. If they don't have on a quality pair of sunglasses with ultimate polarization, I'm going to be spotting fish by myself because I can see so much better through the surface in the water in a pair of dark polarized lenses. It's one of a thousand things that will help make you better. All right, Rick, we're in the Skull Island. This is the smallest boat that we brought here today. And really to call this boat a flats boat is kind of an injustice. This is what's referred to as a technical polling skiff. Dave, this boat is for a clearly defined mission, okay? This is what I mean about what are you going to do with a boat most of the time. You're going to spend most of your time in a boat like this chasing fish that are in water, oh gosh, the depth of my ankles. Well, you know what? I've been in Isla Mirada, and I've seen that bone fish that was just out of reach. He can't quite reach him. I was hard aground. There was no way to wade to him. In this boat, I could have got close. I don't know if I'd have caught him, but I sure could have got close enough to make the cast. I'd have put my money on the bone fish. But having said that, you can get in places with this boat that even the, even the other flats boats that we're looking at, this takes it to another level. This is another type of boat. This boat is designed to get skinnier than anything else you can fish out of this propelled. It's super economical. Like you said, 30 horsepower motor. It's going to cost less to buy, less to maintain, certainly less to operate. But it, it's where this boat can fish, which separates it from the other two that we brought. Dave, there's a few factors that make that so. One of them is the draft of this boat, OK? It's built very light, in, which means it draws less water the less water a boat draws, of course, the shallower you can get. But the Kevlar in this boat is a real plus when it comes to the weight of the boat you're in. So you can still cross some chop like we did this morning. This boat ran really well in the chop. It did, but figure this, this boat weighs 450 pounds. That's almost unheard of for a boat that you're going to have out in open water. But it really handled it quite well. In where I live in northeast Florida, the rage has become redfish. And we refer to our redfish in northeast Florida is Northeast Florida bonefish because they'll get up in the water with their backs completely. There's not enough water for them to get all the way in it. Right. Their whole backs are out of the water. This is the type of boat that can get as skinny as they can. Right, well, she's available in three different configurations. A tiller, if you want it almost like a, a fiberglass John boat. A side console, which I love because you have a lot more room. And they also have a center console. But if you look at this boat, you talk about no nonsense. There's no live well in this particular model. We have got good storage for and aft. Batteries under here, fuel tank again in the bow to help balance out the weight. This boat is all business when it comes to fishing it's a, way up on the flat. It's a very clearly defined mission. I want to catch big fish in very skinny water. Rick, up here in the bow, it's got that nice flush deck that you like, plenty of room to cast off of, even maybe for a second guy. And I've got storage here 
And what I love is having the fuel tank up in the bow to help balance out the weight of the motor in the back. Dave, you're right. And back here, what you look for in a high quality boat. How about this Edson wheel that's even padded on the bottom, okay? Makes it easier on a long day. This hatch, perfect access. It's Kevlar, Dave. It's all about weight. You want to keep your hull weight at 450 pounds, you have to use the best materials available. Your battery switch is everything very easy to get to. And of course, your polling platform where it all happens. I tell you, guys love this boat, Dave, because they can pull it all day long. You can pull this thing with your little finger, it's so easy. Dave, I gotta tell you, flash boats are all about getting skinny, right? Well, this boat, the Skull Island 16, is about getting skinnier than skinny. It's another level of shallow water pursuit. Well, we've all heard, you know, boats that are designed by fishermen for fishermen, but this is really where this boat shines. You can tell the people that came up with this design really fish. They know what it's like to be able to spin the boat easily. They know what it's like to pull all day long on the flat. They know what it's like to be ultra, ultra quiet. We had talked earlier about how fish can feel the presence of the boat. If you've got a small, narrow frip, footprint like this boat has, those fish aren't going to feel that pressure wave coming off the hull. There's one thing you can say about the guys that designed this boat. They've been there, they've done that. They know how to get skinny and they know how to get close to fish that are used to feeling pressure. Well, technical polling skips, and that's certainly what this boat is. It's in a class all on its own. Yes, it's a flats boat, so we kind of put it in that category of flats boats, but really this is in a class all by itself because of its mission-specific purpose is to get super, super skinny where other boats just, they just can't fit. You know another good application for this boat in your world of the big sport fish? Think about having this on the bow of your sport fish. Oh, it's son. super lightweight. Oh, One son. lift can pick it up, set it on the bow. When you get to the Bahamas, take it off, set it in the water. Hey, you're ready to go. Uh, let me tell you what, I'd love every bit of that. There, there is frustrating to know where all the bone fish are when we're over there with a big sport fish boat and we can't get to it. And you're right, this would fit on the bow perfectly. 450 pound haul weight, you got a very, very small motor on the back. This is a great, small, shallow water pack. Great tender. You're absolutely right. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Florida Sportsman Best Boat. When you buy a Florida fishing license, you support research, conservation-minded fishing, law enforcement, habitat restoration, hatcheries, access to fishing, and programs that connect kids to the outdoors. It's an investment in the future. Those are the reasons I do. That's why I do. These are the reasons I do have my Florida fishing license. Please say, I do too, and get your Florida fishing license. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew stayed at Pirates Cove Resort and Marina in Stewart, Florida. Family owned and operated, featuring 50 renovated rooms with an outstanding restaurant and a full service 50 slip marina. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This week, we're featuring 16 to 22 foot flats boats. Now, Rick, we're in the Sterling 200 XS, and this boat is at the upper end of the models that we brought today. She's 20 feet long, and it's a really big flats boat. It is a flats boat, Dave, but it almost bridges that gap. It's, you could call it a bridge between flats boats and bay boats, because I'd be very comfortable in this boat running out of the inlet, chasing the tarpon down the beach. Well, this is another boat designed by a company that really knows their boats. Several different models, they build flats boats, they build bay boats, and they build uh, the Gambler Bass boat that a lot of people are familiar with. Well, they sure do, and they do a lot of things well. This boat is a boat that certainly you could fish a flats of Alamorati in. Maybe you can't get as skinny as you can in a technical pole and skiff, but you can cross Biscayne Bay without any problem when the chop comes up. All right, maybe a little tougher to push with a push pole because she is 20 feet long. There's a lot of displacement here, but as we talked about before, everything's a trade-off. That displacement is going to give you an incredible ride in rough water. It really is, Dave. And just like you said, everything's a trade-off. Everything on a boat is a, is a compromise. You give up something, you get something. Dave, but what you gain when you go up to this boat is the ability to carry the whole family. This boat's rated to carry five people in it. You can fish a little bit rougher water. You can fish deeper water. You, you can still get back on the flats, but if you want something a little more versatile, this may be the way you want to go. Another thing I like about this Sterling, it is loaded out with features. Fresh and salt water wash down. You've got a hydraulic jack plate with the controls right on the helm. And if you look at the features that are incorporated in this boat, pull out tackle boxes, multiple live wells, Really, really a feature packed boat. Well, it is, Dave, and you mentioned the jack plate. Jack plate's a big deal on a boat this size because not only can you angle your motor up to push your way out of really shallow water, you actually raise the motor. 
to get you out of shallower water. It gives you some of the features of the technical polling skip without giving up the comfort of being able to take the whole family. Right, still bow mounted fuel tank, a lot of storage. I mean, we see this in all the boats. I like the built-in tackle boxes. Live well under here, which is also an ice chest, because there's, uh, you know, it's all insulated, so if you want to put your drinks in there, you can. Good storage back here, excellent access to your systems. And what I like too is you got the nice big wide gunnels, but the rod holders are in built-in boxes from the top rather than having to go underneath. Some people may really like that. Well, I really like it, but Dave, it's no accident that they refer to these boats as sterling. Their reputation is, their fit and finish is, there's a reason why they call this boat a sterling. Well, it's going to take us a little while to go through all the features this boat has, so let's get started. At only 20 feet in length, this is the largest boat that we brought here today, but look at the size of this casting platform. Three people could easily fish up here, and still you've got this monster cockpit. Yeah, and I tell you, Dave, when you've got this much beam on the boat, and this boat's wider than eight feet, you don't even feel it as you and I move around this boat. This boat, because of her beam, is very stable. Right, well, it's a big 20-foot boat. That's going to be really advantageous if you're going to run across choppy water. Here again, if you're going to make that long run across Florida Bay or up your way, if you want to sneak out to the inlet, this boat's got the legs to do it. But still get shallow. Don't forget that. That's the roots of this boat. This is a flats boat. That's what it's designed for. But you kind of bridge that gap of getting into little bigger bay boats. If that's the kind of boat you're looking for, this 20-foot Sterling may be the boat for you. Rick, out of the three boats we brought, this is the only one that's got a tow rail up here. I like it. I really don't fly fish that much, but I know it's to keep your fly line. I just like to know where the edge of the deck is. <laughs> it's a warning track is what it is, Dave. Oh, incidentally, if you just kick that tow rail, you're about to fall overboard. Rick, you know, it's the little things that I see in a boat that really separate them. And I like stuff like you have storage here for your keys, your cell phone. Top of your dash is padded, so what you set up here is not going to slide off. There's even a cup holder built down here in the rod holders. You're right, Dave. You, you would not believe how many guys have to fight the battle of stuff sliding back off of, their, off of their consoles. Having non-skid here shows that the people that built this boat knew what they were looking for. Dave, I tell you something else unusual. This backrest, not only is it removable, but it's actually attached to the rod holder on the platform. I can lean back. You know how so often you feel like you're being pushed forward? This is a really comfortable backrest. Well, the design of this platform is really unique. I like the way the steps are offset. So when I go to climb up it, I don't have to put my feet under it. You've got a step out here and a step out here. The height of it, I can put a lot bigger motor on here, and when you run that jack plate all the way up, the top of your cowling's not going to hit the bottom of your polling platform. Rick, the last thing I want to mention is the construction of the hull. They use a combination of carbon fiber and Kevlar, because you know running a boat in shallow water is just a matter of time before you find that stump or that rock or that coral reef. If you do, and you've got a hole that can that can take a punch. There's only two kinds of flash fishermen, Dave. Those that have hit something hard running shallow and those that haven't yet. Right. There's no such thing as those that never will. But Dave, where this boat really fits, you want to flats fish, boats are becoming more utilitarian all the time. If you want to still chase that bonefish but include the family, this Sterling 20 might be the best boat for you. If you're looking for a boat that gives you the ability to pull across a shallow flat for bonefish, permit, or tarpon, then a flats boat in the 16 to 22 foot range might just be the best boat for you. For more information, go to our website, floridasportsman.com, go to the boating page, and see more of the best boats that we tested. And we'll see you next week on Florida Sportsman's Best Boat. Each month, turn to Florida Sportsman for the best in boating and fishing coverage.